unmute. Correct, correct, unmute, correct. Yes, okay, yes. yeah, bring, bring your screen down that I can see your face in the picture. I'm, I'm seeing your ceiling instead of your face. So oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Okay, okay, that's a better looking fellow there than the ceiling. <laughs> You can bring it down yes. some more. Bring, bring it some more. Adjust it some more. Okay. okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the ride. Um, we've been standing by waiting for your arrival. And um, I must say that um, I've been trying to get you for some time from your visit here to New York. I listened to your um, speech as the chairman of that gathering. And I realized this is someone we need to speak to. So um, we're gonna kick it off real quick because folks been waiting to hear from you. So just give a quick synopsis of who you are so that we can roll into the conversation. Okay, I'm Hensley Daniel. I'm, the, I'm now the chairman of the party, but in the past I have served as the party's organizer for nine, 20 years. Um, I've been the vice president of the party as well for nigh 20 years. And um, being the deputy premier and the minister of health and social services, youth, sports, culture, community development, all of the people related matters in the government. Prior to that, of course, I used to be the director of community affairs in Nevis, where all the social services were under one roof. So in the last, what, 45 years in public service, I began my career as a public school teacher, teaching French and Spanish, then moving into social work, then into politics, then now into social policy development. You know. well, for, so, for someone who's been around for some time in Nevis, I'm pretty sure you got a great deal of knowledge and experience with what's happening. Yes. I am I, I am fresh in the Navy Island election. I have been paying attention to the overall federal cabinet for the past mm -hmm. seven, seven years and getting more involved more so in the last two years. And for me, I am drunk from all of the corruption and confusion I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. So for someone like you who've been there for all these years, I'm pretty sure that um, you got a, a great deal of experience and concerns because I have a lot of concerns with the current situation as we mm. speak at Nevis. So well, uh, I'll give but, you the opportunity me, to, to, to share your yeah, views. Concerns. Okay, first of all, I would like to say that we have a, an election coming in a week. We have a brand new slate of candidates led by Janice Daniel Hodge. We have Patricia Bartley. Cleone Stapleton, J.D. Keynes, and, and Rohan Isles, all of which bring some particular things to bear on the party. And they have outlined a whole range of things which they want to do. Patricia, for instance, has come forward with programs for single women, programs to create employment, programs for um, essentially um, putting the soul of the people back onto the, the, into the, the mix of politics. So she has been out in the field, meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, sharing with them and helping them, which is totally unlike her, her, her opponent who is condescending and contemptuous of people, especially ordinary people. So that's Patricia. Then you have J.D. Keynes in Charleston, who brings a, a, a high level of energy and um, organization, having herself worked in voluntarily in a number of organizations, cultural and others, and has outlined some uh, very interesting programs for, for um, health care and has been talking about developing education, in particular looking at what, what she wants to do in Charleston, build community centers, renovate the health center, and so on. You know, so that's new, and she's a, a, a highly organized person and um, someone who, when elected, will begin to work immediately. Then you have Cleone Stapleton Simmons, who, who has been the representative for St. Thomas's for the last two years and has set up the St. Thomas's Foundation, has been out in the field meeting people dealing with their concerns, sharing, helping, 
people through all the ages. You see them, you see it regularly. You see the movement with her in Barnes, got Jessup, Scott Brown, the Westfield, the whole works, you know. And so you are seeing somebody who brings that level of commitment to people. And uh, of course, with her formal training, ed education, and life, she brings something she can, be, she will be a key player in the government. And then you have the political leader of the party, Janice Daniel Hodge, who is an, um, an environmentalist or somebody who has spent a lot of time um, exploiting the marine resources and bringing the, bringing the marine resources um, to a point where the citizens can benefit from those resources. So she's been talking a lot about the blue and green economy. Of course, she's been talking about um, the whole business of government, governance and education and so on, but critically about using the blue and green economy to create opportunities and so on, and talking about renewable energy and, and so on. A whole range of those kinds of things. And of course, Rohan Iles, who has been pounding the pavement in Gingerland, talking about development of uh, multi-purpose center to group all the services, talking about reopening the health center, reopening the library, reopening the public market, providing indoor facilities for sports and so on. And of course, carrying young people with them. So you have a brand new slate of candidates and candidates who are anti-corruption and anti- um, you're, you're close, you're, you're close your mic. Tap your screen, open your mic. Your mic is close. Tap your screen, open your mic there. Um, Hensley. From their demeanor, that they are people can, in whom that people can repose their trust. No, so I, I just give you that for the candidates because I, I think people need to know what, 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 what the, who the candidates are. Every opportunity is, to be given to highlight them and so on. Um, Patricia, in addition, has been speaking a lot about the corruption, talking about finding ways to create employment, reopening the, the call center in Brownhill and so on. So they have not just, they have really been focused, uh, Marisha, on programs and projects to kickstart the economy because it has been dead. Now, in relation to the, 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 the issues in the CCA, and Marisha, I ran in the 2017 election. A drill rig was brought to Nevis as showbiz that this, this is going to be the drill rig to dig the well to create geothermal energy. Mind you, and I'm happy left some wells here done already. Here is a government that spent some $7 million to do this. And just last week, the, the chief executive officer of the electricity company said those wells, that well has to be abandoned. Now, this, the premier deserves a public flagging. He needs a public flagging in Charleston. You bring a drill wheel, wheel spend, take up $7 million of Nevis people money, pay them to drill, drill the rig. And now the general manager says, that the rig was not built to standards. Now, Marisha, what is this? Child's play? This is kindergarten business, and you can just do this. He should need me showing up. I, I, I see the thing that yesterday that he went to be nominated. This is crazy. You take up $7 million to build a, be, to dig a, a, a well, and now the well has to be abandoned. So the $7 million from Nevis doesn't matter. How could it not matter? And this is somebody who people say, no. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, Marisha, because I taught the premier in school, so he could pass the exam. But of course, you know and I know passing the exam is a totally different matter to running government. You have to have what it takes, the testicular fortitude and the competence, which comes from working. And I, I, I posted something on Facebook a few days ago to say that Nevis is being asked to vote for a, a 53 year old premier who has not done a full day's work in 55 years. You get that? 
Yeah. Okay. So here you have, you, you, you bring a drill rig to Nevis. You're showing off. You take picture with you and the rig. And a few years later, the, the general manager of the electricity company is saying the rig was not built, was not dug to international standards. So they are going to condemn it and pour concrete down there, um, Marisha. They have already fenced it and they are going to pour concrete down there to fill it up. This you know, is what the, the premier brings to us after being on television, showing off the second issue is during the pandemic, the premier is on television showing off lobster and cooking while people in the supermarket putting back Venus sausage. I mean, this is contempt for people. And all I'm saying is the time has come to put this behind us. There was no reason, no logical reason to ever vote for the, the premier because he has never lifted a finger to help anybody in this. And if you look at his operations, it's all about self. I come now to the next project, um, Marisha, before, and I will, after I finish this, you can um, raise questions. The next project was also started in 2017, an extension of the hospital, which is larger than the existing hospital, but it is four feet higher than the existing hospital. So you can't, so the connectivity is a problem. It's badly designed, designed by a member of his cabinet who sits in, the architect sits in the cabinet, okay? Five years after and $19 million are spent and the hospital is not finished. So you, 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 and there is, and the citizens of the country need to get get with the program all over the world. People are revolting against this kind of approach to government, revolting, not just opposing Marisha. They are revolting against this kind of behavior. In Iran, despite all the, the laws, people are revolting. In, in, the, in China, people are revolting. In, in non-democratic countries, people are revolting. A democracy has to be noisy, Marisha because the, you have the right to peaceful assembly, to right to protest. And the people of Nevis have sat there and voted for Ma after five years. So see what happens with the hospital. It's badly designed. It can't meet the standards. That too doesn't meet the standards for a hospital. The government brought in some people to assess where we are. The, the, the people working on the hospital parked up, saying, look, we can't go any further. This is madness. They brought a company in, looked at the assessments and said, look, this will take 1.4 million US dollars to redesign, to redesign. And so where we are at now is paying a company to redesign the hospital. You, you get me? And then the, after they redesign the hospital, they now will charge about, it will take another 15 to $20 million to get the hospital done. Now, this, what kind of kindergarten approach is this to, to government? So you, you see, you, you, you know, when we were small, our parents used to say, you can't put a big man britches too quick. You're right, you, you, you got to grow into the britches. And that's what happened to the premier. Put on big man bridges too quick. You see people in government, you don't know what's going on. You get on a radio station and every Wednesday night and start to talk about the government, but never once offered an, 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 an alternative. So little boys in political short pants can't run government marriage. This is, the, this is what happens here. And making a mockery. So here you have, the well was not dug to standards and the hospital was not built to standards. So you're going to spend, you spend $19 million already. You need four more million dollars to spend to correct it. And you need another 15 million, 19 and four are 23 and 15. You're going to spend $38 million. You know, uh, Marisha, I, I was in, um, El Salvador in 2019, we were working with a company developing a, a 100 bed hospital. And I, I am just amazed. How could the Navy's people vote for this level of incompetence? I was there in 2019 in El Salvador. 
And you know who the people were? They were designing a hospital. Um, the first set of people we were having the discussion with, I was working with the company that was financing the hospital. And the, you, the, we were meeting with the architects. And you know who the architects were? They only build medical facilities. You can't take an architect who build house and other and drop shit and tell him to put the, go put down a hospital. It For just sure. doesn't work like that, right? So these guys only build medical facilities like laboratories and hospitals and so on. And the, the um, pharmacy buildings to house pharmacy and so on. They specialize in that. The construction company with which we were working, they only build medical hospital, medical facilities also. So you, you, you see the difference? You have people who know what they're doing. They're building medical facilities. They, and they designed it. Then, of course, we, we, we had a long discussion with the health authorities in El Salvador, and we had a long discussion with the, with the, um, the, 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 the finance, the, the, the comp, because it's a private company. So we had, so you have the, 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 the project sponsor, which is the people do, providing the money. You have the people who, uh, who want to build the hospital. You have the architects and you have the construction. You see, you, see, you see the difference? And they on, you are having long discussions. And then we have a set of presentations from people who, the, who are putting forward the economics of it. Because I think that time you were saying that if it's a million dollars per bed. So you build a hundred, you build a hundred bed hospital, you have you, you, you need a hundred million dollars. So you know what we could have done with that money, Marisha? We could have built in Nevis a 25-bed hospital, state-of-the-art hospital, with the money. And then, because I was the minister of health, the, the, generally the traffic in the hospital is a 52-bed hospital. Generally, the traffic, the traffic, the traffic is about 50%. So let's say 30 beds, just to be just to be sure. You could have been, could have built a 30-bed hospital. With all the services, with about four, two, two or three state of the art IC room, but everything was state of the art, would be state of the art. And it would probably cost about fifty million dollars. But when you do know what you're doing and where you're going, you know, Marisha, anywhere we'll go, do, and that is what CCM. They have never sat down. They have no interest in this. They never did. Their only position has always been. To keep an happy out of office, and they've done a good job of it. Because to keep a party of the boy, you only got to you only got to call them down and say they you just got to be negative all the time. And you know, in a society like ours, in black societies, negatives sell and sell good. You have another man who became Perkins admitted that he made a ten million dollar mistake on a three mile road, which cost nineteen million dollars in the early two thousand. That road went to, from $19 million when, in fact, it was $9 million. And he said he made an honest mistake. It's not $10 million, but he makes a $10 million mistake, Marisha, and he becomes Speaker of the House. So the, he, he, you understand you get rewarded for incompetence. It appears so. Huh? It appears so down there. All of that with the system come right through. So you, you have now elections are coming. You have, you're paying a set of people in St. John's and right across and some other places across Nevis to cut down the trees. Well, we just went to COP22 in Egypt last year. Um, Minister Evelyn went to, I mean, it was last year, somewhere in Europe to, to COP22 talking about climate change. Well, we sent us we sent a set of people to Egypt this very year and somewhere here from Nevis under the new government of Dr. Drew. So while they're in COP22 talking about the need to reduce carbon emissions and control soil erosion, the government in Nevis is cutting down the trees. So the trees which bring rain, the trees which provide cover from shade and which hold the soil in the ground. I mean, the uh, this is the behavior of retarded people, and I make no to make the, and I don't make any uh, bones about that. And to come Monday morning to say we must vote for you, but you can't build a hospital, you can't organize a degree, 
look at the state of um, education, school opening September. Well, not everybody forgets school opening September. So all when the children are, are supposed to be in school, school closed till when they fix up the school. And then you, you have the prospect primary school. You got this school now look like a low income housing project. Because every other week, every other year, you go down there and put on a drop shed to add the classroom. And the simple, logical thing to do is to put another story on top of the original structure, reinforce it, and leave the play field for the children to run and play. But of course, I'm um, very sure, then you don't know what you're doing. You could get on the radio, and as I say, you get elected and you, you, um, you tell people all the negatives, but you never once offer the anything. We, you have all the young men in the country packed up. The economy is packed up. The number of small businesses, the number of people who are who are struggling. School school children leave school. Um, you nothing to do. Small businesses can't get the support. A number of them closing. You know, Marisha, this is the only leader in the world during the pandemic never come up with a, a single program to help his people in need. So Dr. Harris come up with something to give, uh, I think, a thousand dollars to social security funding. So of course, Nevis benefits. So what he has done for Nevis is to put us back to the Christina days. So he has made St. Kitts, Nevis dependent on St. Kitts, as you think it is some big rich country. St. Kitts has the same history of colonialism and, 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 and development like us. But you sit in the cabinet, do no work, do no work. And then Harris is supposed to have his provided $400 million. Some people say five, but I did, I, I, I said $400 million. And, and you can't show anything in needs that you did with the $400 million. When we were in government, and you know what the boss and say, Mary, so that we didn't get so much money from Douglas. We're not, we're not beggars. We're a bunch of forward black people in Nevis. We have our own land. People with their own land operate a different way. There's a level of independence which comes with land ownership, okay? And um, home ownership is high levels in Nevis. So we don't do that. We worked with the labor government. Labor was in power in St. Kitts. We were not going to fight it. And also we found out, I mean, well, we know that long time, but the labor party policies in terms of how they look for education and ordinary people and so on, those are the same kind of policies that they're not be promote. So Parry and Douglas could work together. The two cabinets used to meet and so on. But me do not mean I mean to beg you, if I come to St. Kitts tomorrow, Marisha and I see why, because I come from New York, I must beg you to buy me lunch. What, what, what goes up? Eh? So here we have a, a man who make Nevis and turn the country into beggars. And so we plug in like current to St. Kitts. So if anything goes wrong in St. Kitts and they can, and they have a financial challenge, Nevis. So he does no work, he does nothing. He, to run the economy, he traveled, I, I, I forget how many times he has traveled as foreign minister and how much money, over half a million dollars, I think. I, 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 one of my colleagues was doing a, an assessment. Hey, Marisha, you go away all the time, you don't even be back on taffy, not even on sweetie. You can go to New York and have a meeting with Goldman Sachs and them and say, get them to get, get the program around some kind of investment. You travel the world, you say that you, you're improving, you're increasing the diplomatic footprint. For what? Those things don't mean one damn thing in Nevis because nobody benefits from that. And I'm saying he, the Premier and his team has been a monumental failure. And on Monday, the citizens don't even need to consider, make the comparison. Hear the trouble, Marisha. People say, that we didn't get any money from Douglas. Okay, yeah. But look at what we did in Nevis with no money. We built 376 homes in Nevis between 2006 and 2012. Think about it. Um, 
The premier is just building must be eight or 10 houses in St. John's for the first time, Marisha. These are the first eight houses he built in St. John's after having been the representative in St. John's for January coming like 10 years. And he built it's less than 10 houses I see down there. Okay. So he doesn't intend to do any work and he needs his people. They promote that foolish. But I I believe the, the chickens have now come home to roost. The people of you know, I, I I have to look in a very different kind of way at the people who are promoting the government. Because you know, they remind me they are complicit with the government. They are complicit. And of course, there are those around them who want the status quo to remain because a few of them get something. And that is enough. It doesn't mean that doesn't know doesn't bother them that it that it uh, um you're tapping your you're, you're touching your, your screen again. Tap your screen, your mic is closed. I'm not hearing you. Tap your screen, open your mic. You got to keep your hands away from the from the device. Tap your screen, open the mic. Tap the screen, unmute. Tap your screen, unmute. Okay. Uh, bring bring your phone up again. Bring your device up. I'm losing your face again. And keep your hands away from the device because once you touch it, you close your mic. Oh, okay. What okay. happened? Someone was calling me there. That's right. Yeah, well, that happened as well. Um, just since since we got interrupted, let me just jump in here quick. Um, what is funny about this thing that came up with the geothermal um, wells, the 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 wells that was disbanded are uh, to be disbanded. That piece of information. It's funny that it comes to light now. Not too long ago, I have a clip here to play when you're ready. I'll play it for you that Mark and his team was here in New York doing a town hall. And I had the opportunity to ask a few questions about the geothermal and the, the um, anarium and a couple of different other things. And he took the time out, him and his um, deputy prime minister, I mean, deputy premier, speaking about the history of the geothermal and they went deep into talking about west indian power that nrp work with and whatever 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 and he went on to talk about the, the new deal that he get with dr just signing this letter that timothy harris refused to sign and whatever whatever at no time he find the time to talk about those wells that i questioned him about but but marisha he also needed to say that Premier Parry, while we were in government, I remember being in New York with him. And next thing, the CCM people wrote to the to the inter the export import bank telling them not to finance the, 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 the geothermal. They also wrote to the US Embassy in Barbados because we had taken over the cable television to put the Mr. B I think it's Lee Bortman in his place. You don't come to Nevis and decide that you're going to increase the, the rate without having the common courtesy to discuss it with the government. You don't do that. So we decided, and the US embassy took a great offense to that, but they wrote them to tell them they must put pressure on NRP. So we gave the company back to, we had to give the company back to Bertman in the interest of good relations with the US. We, we can't fight the US. We can fight, but we will never win. So it's, yep. it's, useless. it's useless to fight. So they wrote to the US embassy to tell them not to fund the, the not to tell them to hold us to ransom over geothermal. And then they subsequently wrote to the, Export Import Bank, Mr. Parry was there. I remember we were in New York and next thing the Observer printed a, a front page article saying geothermal is dumped because they, they were able, the people in those agencies told them, okay, at the IADB, not IADB, the Export Import Bank, the, Mr. Parry asked the gentleman for the letters, but of course he couldn't get them. But they wrote, when I came home, the, one of the leading system people said to me, by hands there, are you joking? If all you bring geothermal, all you will win the next election. 
And so we have to stop it so that you are doing with the election. All right? So when they talk about geothermal, they also needed to say that. Say that CCM wrote. I mean, Marisha, you understand what this is? Black men in Navy's right to white men in America. Tell them to stop the project with the black people, which would mean that we would have had the wells by now. We would have had the geothermal project by now. And all these, all these problems, all this ton of money we have to pay for oil would, would have been, that would have, would, have, would have stopped. I remember speaking when we went so far, Marisha, as to develop the geothermal, as to go to parliament and pass the geothermal development ordinance with the rates and everything. We had um, um, professional advice from um, the, what's his name? Kevin DeCuba from the OAS and Minister Powell was front and center as the, the junior minister responsible for public utilities. You can talk to him. He has all the details, Well, I know, know the de details, but he has a defined details on the project. So let them also say that they stop the project so that me, these poor people, me, these black people could never get geothermal. That's all they do. Um, the, the, the CCM is the biggest tumbling block that ever happened to me. It's a stumbling block. And, and um, they, they have a thing saying they could win election and they say we could we could run government. But what elections are not, to, uh, are not for running government, Maria? <laughs> I'm, losing, I'm losing your face in the screen again. Need to bring up your, your no, thing. No. Uh, you, know, you, know, the, you know, the funny thing is, Hensley, and I just want folks to understand, you know, NRP did not come to Marisha and ask Marisha to campaign for them. Marisha chose to continue the get rid of okay. them campaign from St. Kitts for Nevis because I am convinced that this guy, Mark Bartlett, is not ready. His lies and deception does not do any good for the people of Nevis and the island of Nevis. That is why I'm here. Yes, thank you. And remember also, what the people of Nevis need to understand is that he was part of the unity construct. It was him, it was CCM, PAM, and PLP, which formed the last of them. Yeah. So the same kids voter has said, look, I put you all in there with a nine seat, major nine seat out of the, out of the 11. And you all come back saying how you can't work together and you broke up. Well, since you broke up, we go mash up all you in the polls. So the same kids voters understood that look, if you send these people to parliament and they mess up, you don't send them back. It's simple, simple as that. It's simple as that, you know. Simple and and Harry Sweet was returned with a significantly reduced majority, and, and so was Richard, because this the vote. Every one of the Labour candidates who won, won in every box. That is a remarkable um, dusting, if you wish, of a, a, a tempo which the St. Kitts people saw, where we send you to Parliament. Nine of the 11 seats and you come back, say, are you not working together? Well, are you not going back there? It's the same thing the Nevis people needed to do. I mean, what is it that is taking the Nevis people so long to understand? Is all of, is, and you know what is so interesting, Marisha? When you go to the constituencies and you talk to people, and also people talk to you, of course, not one soul in Nevis tell you the government is performing. Not one person in Nevis tell you the government is performing. I went to a young man and I said, well, um, I know you, I'm, I, I'm asking you to vote for Pat, for Patricia Bartlett. And the young man says, Daniel, so I said to him, well, tell me what CCM do. <laughs> the young man said, look, Mr. Daniel, I respect you, you are a teacher, don't let me and you follow today. Everybody know the government don't do nothing and that the government is a waste of time and you know too. This is what the, the voter is telling me, you know. So he's telling me, look, don't let me and your father, say he has done nothing. So here is Mark saying that we <laughs> NRP not putting forward no plan because we're supposed to put plan for him. Oh, really? You, you running to, you know, it comes like you forget that he's running. He's the premier. 
he should be putting plans together. Tell us, we say, we say that we are going to create employment. We say we are going to develop the blue green economy. We're going to open up the southern side of Nevis and do the South Coast Road. We're going to bring people to work in the in the Carl Center, and we are going to send people to college. And to echo what Patricia Bartlett says, we are going to put, which is what we did before too. Patricia Bartlett has said, we are going to put a university graduate in every house. So they hear and they know, but he has absolutely nothing to show. Look what happened here now, uh, Marish. He gave a gift of, a, of course, the dialysis unit, he said people need to stop talking about it because we talk about it and the people still vote for us. That is a serious indictment against the people. You remember and people get the government they dissolve you. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. You allow the dialysis unit to rot in the hospital while people go to sink it for dialysis. I, I wrote to Marcella, um, Marishal. When we brought the machines, when we bought the machines, I said to her, look, we don't want two of these things operating, one in single, one in each. It costs money. Let's work together. And um, I told her all the things that were in there and so on. So when Marcella realized that these guys here were fooling around, that is when they, they, they went and well, they have a machine in Nevis and they leave it to run. I mean, that is treason, you know. That is treason in my view. And you leave it to rot, and the citizens who come down with renal failure have to go to St. Kitts. And you have the gall to go to St. Kitts and take photos with them at the dialysis unit in St. Kitts. Can you imagine? I mean, this is the best example of foolishness in the world. So here you have now, he gets a gift from the Dragon Foundation to provide a city scan. The city scan is in a container. No, the, the city scan ought to have been installed in the new wing of the hospital, right? right. So you see how much set of money you're spending. You, you have to spend money to recondition the container and make sure the system are, because these machines are highly sensitive machines. But uh, um, their job is just be, to prevent. Be, 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 before you move, the city scan coming in at this time is a gimmick for the election, you know? Well, come on, Mr. Brantley has no interest in people. The sooner people understand that, and I think a large number of them do, I just need them to transfer that sentiment to the vote, to the vote, okay? Because there is really no reason, no evidence that Mr. Brantley intends to be a better um, representative of the people. If you get $400 million from the federal government over a period of what, five years, six years, seven years, where Marisha, shouldn't you as a man from St. Kitts, you as a man from St. Kitts should be able to come leave and say, boy, I hear Harris give me 400 million. I come to, I, I'm supposed to be able to pick you up on the P and say, Marisha, man, come let me show you the things. That Mark has done with the money. That's all. Yeah. Harris himself got worried about it. Harris came up here to come to, to go to the um, to the police station to see how the money is spent. So you build the police station and the poli the garage to hold the fire truck is too small. But 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 Marisha, oh, 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 what 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 is? Now tell me what is. Then you you build the pier at Uali. And you can't find a way of providing proper accommodation for people. They're in Charleston, there's proper accommodation. In Basque, you know, there's proper accommodation. You build up a, a, a new pier at Oali, and you can't provide proper accommodation for people. And so the, the real issue is the premier is contentious of the Nevis people. And he feels that he. What makes him feel that he's entitled to be the premier or to be elected? He has never been a member of a community organization anytime. And 
his five years in government. I mean, you listen to Dr. Patricia Bartlett, she says, look, in 2018, I realized this guy here is off course. And so whenever he has to address the matters that she puts to him, as she said to him, don't, 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 don't think about cussing me. Think about responding to what I say. Poverty is the highest in the parish of St. John's of all the parishes in, 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 in St. Kitts and Nevis. St. John's has the highest level of poverty. Okay, so he must address that. Unemployment, education. Well, health is a disaster, total, you understand? And so you come into power and stop and, and stopping all the things that NRP does. Well, well Marisha, you know what I say all the time, Marisha? All those people who, who go to Mark and those who plan to vote for him on Monday, I want them to tell me that they will never come down with renal failure. They will never need the, the dialysis unit. They will never need to be dialyzed. They need, you see, because when you're going to vote and you're going to vote with a lot of bad mind and a lot of malice, you're going to vote like that. You need to tell me that the machines that were abandoned at the hospital, you, now nobody for you, will ever succumb to renal failure. That is what they need to be able to tell me, Marish. And I want them to tell me that. Father, uh, the more I listen to you speak and the other guests that I've spoken to over the past months, I'm getting goosebumps when it comes to the health care of Navis. I'm losing you again on your screen. And why I'm getting goose, goosebumps, partner, anybody who would check me and know what I've been doing. People, some people think that I'm just a disc jockey, I play music. I am a certified electrician. I have been working as an electrician in a hospital here in New York, one of the bigger hospitals mm -hmm. for 20 plus years. I have traveled the country with one of the biggest union, 1199 SEIU, to deal with these issues. Back in the days when people were getting stick with needles and getting AIDS from that and whatever, those retractable needles and all of these things, the N95 mass is right there. They fired the hospital in California. I was a part of the team that did those tests. I build many temporary ICU OR's, recovery room, dialysis units, name it for the institutions here because you know we have a thing here in North America that they call um, Joint Commission. There yes. is an organization that every yes, two years you must go through that process. But that I know because we were building, the, when we went to build the hospital in, um, in El Salvador, they sent us their um what they look for also and while i was minister of health i had discussions with them at the health conference in miami and they, they gave me some things to address okay i was a part of that team for several years until i i, I left the point i am making is that whenever i hear politician on the platform in st kitts and nevis mm -hmm. they tell us that we travel out and we get education and experience bring it back home many of them come here and they know what we do here. When I hear the type of money that has been wasted on that wing in Nevis, Brother Daniel, Nevis mm -hmm. have some very talented tradesmen down there, masons, carpenters, and the like, and the otherwise. I could have correct that problem at that hospital using local people because I have the necessary skills, technical skills to deal with the mm -hmm. other aspect of stuff without bringing in folks from the outside. So why right. are we wasting all this kind of money and foreigners while we got local people there suffering to get a job? Well, you know, I, I, I on one hand, basically, um, Marisha, he does not know what to do. I, I think, so it's not only that he doesn't do, you know, the premier does do what to do. How do you get to know what to do? You, you, you work. You hear what you say? You work, you get experience, and you and you work with one of the big unions, and you go around and you, you work with other people 
and for 20 years. So if I put you in charge of, a, of something, a, a, of the electrical, if I hire you to, to provide maintenance, if I hire you to provide maintenance services, something is speeding back there. You have two units on. One of them is speeding back. I'm trying to get two units. Mute one of them. Just just press the mute button on one of them, the one that you're not using. Yeah, yeah. I was saying again on the computer. Yeah, okay. Press the mute button, it's speeding back badly. Okay. okay. All right. Um, no, what I'm saying, what I was saying is that you could go and be, I can give you the contract to provide electric men to maintain the, the electricity pro at the hospital because you have an experience, you know what you're doing. Why we give Mark the country to run? What he ever did before? That is the million dollar question. We take up, we take up people who do know nothing and give them a whole country. You know yeah. why Mariston? He get a scholarship free. He get a, a la, he get to join a law firm free. And he turn around and tell me, he will give me a country free. And they say, yeah, man, no problem. Forgetting uh, that they are supposed to get, uh, to hire people in government who will take their interest for. It's amazing how we have so much money wasting there in our little islands that basically you're trying it in a, in a bottomless pit when we could do much better. As a matter of fact, uh, and I was supposed to go until seven o'clock and I was hoping we could have gone until seven o'clock, but I'm gonna have to make up the time. But I just mm -hmm. wanna bring somebody in quick that you could see. Um, come on here. I, I, I have my cousin here with me. Bring your face on in the camera that, that uh, folks can see. Yeah. This is my cousin, uh, Ken Bunny. This oh. man, this man, I'm I'm gonna give him the mic, the head so that he could hear what you're saying because I want to tell you who he is. Just took them. This man is a consultant mm -hmm. for various government around the globe, right? And I am bringing him down to Saint Kitts with me in a couple of weeks because I realize what is going on down there, and a lot of money that we could use in the federation is he have it going all around the place. So Kent introduced himself. This is Brother Hensley Daniel from Nevis, and his election mode in Nevis. So we're having a conversation about the situation there. Brother Daniel from Nevis, how are you? I'm eight out of ten. Well, listen to me. I have a lot of uh, relationship with Nevis. You know, I was born down there about 30 years ago to put in the airport with Simeon Daniel and um, the oh, boys. Man. When you had Shaf and all those boys, it's been a while when Four Seasons came on board. Yes. So I, I, I go way back, but my stepmother owned Nelson Spring in Nevis. So that's how close I am to you. Oh, okay. So okay. to the Stevens and Warners, you know? Yes. But but then my background is infrastructure. So I was I do a lot of infrastructure work throughout the world. So being with my cousin right. now, we'll be able to come and assist. And I sent Ricky Skerritt to school. And Stacy and I went to Hampton together. So I know far okay. enough to, to St. Kitts and Nevis, OK? And if right. you know you know, Mr. Tobias? Yes, man, I'm saying clear. Radio? With my, fa my father gave, my father gave Radio the first job at the VI Hotel in the Virgin Islands, OK? And he said he's, he's an engineer. My father said, why well, you even know what vice grip is. That's how far <laughs> back we go. <laughs> and then let me let me tease you. I grew up at the VI Hotel, so my father even had Brother Farrakhan. We used to call him Mr. Charming. He used to sing in a band with us. Yes. Okay, so that's how far back we go as one people. Okay. okay. I give you a little right. history. Right. Well, Mary Show, when he comes, make sure you bring him Nevis. Let me let me have a beer or two. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mary Show. Make sure you bring him. <laughs> Make sure you bring him to Nevis so we can have a beer or two. I definitely bring him to Nevis. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to make it public, but um, I'm coming down to for the election. People know that by now. So I'm heading down to Nevis on Saturday. Right. And, he will be, and he will be joining me as well um, for the weekend. So um, I'll be bringing him over to Nevis. And there's a lot for us to do in St. Kitts Nevis. And the whole right. idea, I am hoping that the people are sensible enough to change government because with this man on my side, there's a lot that Nevis will benefit under NRP government. Right. Let me, let me I, I, I would just like to say that we we should. Okay. Yes, okay. 
So, so, so I even used to hang out with Miss um, Hobson with a little mini more. I the one used to go in the boat when Kenny, oh, Lucille. Uh, yeah, Lucille. when Ira and Kenny sleeping. I the cowboy used to go and help her take the flower out of the boat because them boy don't get up. They still the oh. same behavior, okay? So just tell you okay. how deep I is it with my country down there, okay? Okay, okay. You, okay, you, have, okay you, have, you have connection. You have connection. <laughs> if we did there, guys, help yourself up with your sharply. Help yourself whatever you need. The drinks, there's drinks in the fridge. There's drinks on the shelf. Help yourself. Ice is in the fridge up there. Yeah, but, yeah, but, um, so I, I'm, I, as we close, I'm just asking the people to give Cleon in St. Thomas's the vote. Give Janice in the vote in St. James, give Rohan the vote in St. John's, in, in St. George's, sorry, give Patricia the vote in St. John's, and give JD the vote in Charleston. This team has come with energy, with commitment, and with programs. And we, we can continue with the present situation. Yeah, I, I want to play this clip and get you um, your response, um, Henzi, to this town hall okay. meeting that uh, mark had in um set the virgin i mean in new york now i want you to understand i'm not going to you if you got the time we're going to still chat they will have to wait on me because election is monday okay nevis is important to me right now i want to see the people of nevis and the island of nevis benefit so i will take the time to continue this conversation they will stand by and, and hold on for me listen to this clip. And so we think that those taxi drivers as well warrant that honorary. So we are saying in Nevis, it's not only those who work for government, but there are others who were on the front line, who kept us safe, who also deserve it. So the cabinet in Nevis is now finalizing that list, and we're giving that assurance to the public that that honorary will be paid on the island of Nevis as well. And that is as best as I can explain the situation as to why the honorarium was not paid at the same time. I will only close with this, Mr. Marshall, on that issue. That an honorarium by its very name means you did not work with. And we have a tendency, it seems, in our country where once you hear something free, everybody starts to jump up and say, me, 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 me. Right? I want to be clear that every single public servant on the island of Nevis was paid in full and on time during the pandemic. So it's not as if we owe anybody money. This was a political campaign promise made by the Labour Party. You see, kids, we did not make any such promise when we campaigned in Nevis. But when the Prime Minister made good on that promise, to his workers in Nevis, we said in good conscience, Nevis oh, okay. were also on the front line, oh, you mean, and, you and they in good conscience should be the well. So we have seen the value in extending that to those workers in Nevis, and as I said, others who don't work for government but were also on the front line. Yeah, geothermal. The issue of geothermal has been around for some time. You say that people bring it up for the time. I don't know who the people are, because I will tell you, the system approach in relation to geothermal was saying as little as possible and allow the process to work. The geothermal bodies, as I call it, on the island of Nevis started back in 2004. It therefore means that we have had 18 years and two governments in our places who have not yet been able to do the we have told that you have thought all of the resources you need are the best in the world. The problem has always been finding the money to extract the resources. And we have finally the energy is one aspect of that. And so, the IDB and various green energy funds have, been made, have made funds available to the Caribbean Development Bank. For the development and all it means is that if they pay for the drilling and the drilling is not successful, if it fails, then the money is free. Very clear. Nobody has to pay back. If the drilling is successful, then it means, therefore, that it's converted to a low interest, long term loan. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The Nevis Island Administration has been engaging with the CDB with all the technical aspects. But the CDB as a regional organization said yes, they needed a letter of comfort 
from the federal government, essentially to say that he had an objection to the project. I have my colleagues in the fact, the thing is sent a draft of the letter the that they wanted. We reproduced the draft, sent it to Prime Minister Timothy yeah, Harris. We're, we're he was not prepared to send the letter to the city. So how you and the city said to us they could not move any further until they got that. And so we miss city oh. board meets four times per year. We miss three board meetings waiting on that letter. It never could. I am not going to resign from it. I give the new Prime Minister maximum credit and respect. Because in our first meeting, I raised with him the importance of this geothermal project. And within two weeks, he sent that letter to the CDB, which removed the block and has allowed the CDB now to engage. They were just the nearest, some nine or ten of them dealing with the environmental and social impacts, yeah. and also dealing with some other aspects of this project. And they have now indicated that the project should go before the board this December, the December meeting, for final determination. If that happens, then we expect this project to move forward in the new year with the funding that we need to make it happen. What this will mean, ladies and gentlemen, is that the drilling, what they call the production wells, will be done. The government will take care of that side with the CDB and then have improved the resource, we will then invite bids for private companies to come in now to build a plant and give it the distribution. Now the federal government is very interested in this project, according to our new Prime Minister, Dr. Drew, because all of us have been suffering from high electricity costs as the cost of oil has skyrocketed due to the Ukraine Russia war that is ongoing. To put it in context for you, the people of Nevis were being asked to pay upwards of 30 US cents per kilowatt hour for energy. Geothermal promises that it can come in at around 9 to 10 US cents per kilowatt hour. So if you think about moving from 30 plus cents, that's diesel, fossil fuel, to nine or 10 cents, you start to see the significant savings to our people for the generation of energy. What that will mean, because the same scientists are telling us that the island of Nevis potentially has between 150 and 400 megawatts of available geothermal energy. The island of Nevis at peak only uses 10 megawatts, at peak. So at nights when people are sleeping, it falls below 10. The sink it's at peak is also only at about 35. So the entire nation of sink it's and Nevis is using less than 50 megawatts at peak. If the potential of geothermal is realized, we can export energy from Nevis to Sinkers. But not only that, we can potentially export energy from the Federation to close islands like Sabre, Stasius, and Bar, so we can potentially become a net exporter of energy. And that is the promise, that is the revolution that energy geothermal can create for us because it really means that we wean our economy off the dependence on tourism, which showed that it is a dangerous dependence during COVID when the tourism plant shut down and our people out of work, and it allows us to diversify. I say one final thing in relation to geothermal, that based on the advice that you've taken, we're not moving beyond just energy. They're now saying that from the byproducts of geothermal, ammonia, for example, we can make fertilizer, and there's now a high demand for hydrogen globally that can also be created from our geothermal energy. So it is revolutionary what we're seeking to do, and I'm thankful that the federal government sees the wisdom in partnering with the NIT to ensure that this resource is capitalized upon for the benefit of all the people. Because as I said to the Prime Minister Drew, if Nivijans can get energy at 9 cents a kilowatt hour, then it means our brothers and sisters in Sinkers can get it at or around the same price. Which will mean that the price of energy will drop precipitously in both islands to make us bring this place in time. Because you are not
helps me. Okay. With, all right. with, with all the lies the guy telling there, there's no mention of um the wells that no. have to be abandoned. And no. if those wells have to be abandoned, how are we so sure what kind of energy they're gonna be able to produce when they do drill the new wells? You, you, you see why, Marisha, whenever I hear the premier talk, I pull out my hearing aid. You hear? I pull out my hearing aid like how Eric Williams used to do in Trinidad. You see, because that kind of foolishness doesn't enter my domain. All right? All that he's talking there is what we, we remember I tell you, we already went to the parliament with the, with the, to pass the ordinance, you know. We already had an arrangement with Dr. Douglas's government, the federal government, that it will the 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 distribution line would cost eight million US dollars, that we he would pay for it with money from the SIDF, and that we same kids would get the same, would get the energy from Nevis. Our reading was that there were 90 megawatts of power, 90 megawatts. I don't know where you get this 150 from, but of course, um, I, I don't treat anything he says with even, uh, you know, I, you see, when it comes to me, when people have um, a distant relationship with the truth, I wouldn't be in, I don't listen to them very much when people, and so, all what he was saying there is of no moment. Tell the people that your party also stopped the geothermal. Tell the people that the well, it is not NRP who said that, you know, Marisha, it is the general manager of Neville, the Nevis Electricity Company, who said, look, that well there was not drilled to standard. So we have already fenced it and we're going to pour concrete down there to fill it up. You understand? We got to go take concrete now, buy concrete to fill up something. So the, the I mean, to, for the federal government, then the other point about the federal government that we, but he was in the last federal government, Marisha. Wasn't he in the last federal government? And what did, if, if it wasn't done, how is it we didn't hear about it? How is it the citizens were not told about it, but they protected each other until it became necessary to fight? So, you know, I, when sometimes people um, ask me if I don't hear what Mark say, I said, no, I can't hear if I don't listen. And so I don't listen because you see, there comes a time when you have to actually be speaking to the reality of a situation and to be speaking around it and giving the impression and saying half the fact. Imagine somebody who is part of a party whose party stopped the stop. As I said, Marisha, black men in Nevis right to white men in America. Tell them to stop the geothermal so that black people in America in Nevis and some kids could, could not get so that they do not get electricity. I mean, this is crass ignorance, crass ignorance. And they try to stop everything that we did. And so we have a, a, a new state of candidates and we are saying to the people, give the candidates a chance. I mean, nobody in Nevis believes that, that um, anybody in the government knows anything about this thing named development of Nevis. I mean, it's one thing, um, Marisha, if you don't know, but who around you knows? And who are the people you hire around you who know? Leaders have to, leaders and ministers of government have, must have people around them who can deliver. When I was in government, the same group of men who work with me and women who work with me in the St. John's Community Improvement Club in, from 1977-1990. We built Nevis's first community center by self in 1986. When I went to government in 2006, Suti Byron, Suti Byron, Al Suti Byron, Alstead Pemberton, Dwight Morton, Angelica Elliott, 
all of them were there. And, uh, we've been working together for human betterment. So I bring them to help me at that level. So there are times when, of course, we will have different approaches. Of course, we will argue and differ. But they would tell me, oh, Mr. Minister, I don't think so. You know. And I would listen to them too. And I would say something we're going to do. And they would tell you and so on and so on. That is why we were able. You know what is bad, Marisho? That is why we were able to do so much. You ever hear, I don't know if you were following them, in 2011, the people, um, CCM told the people to vote against us because we're doing too much. I heard somebody said that. <laughs> huh? I heard somebody said that, but something else that came, something else that came to my attention yesterday by Larry Vaughan is that the, the, the St. Kitts Navy Sun had an article in 2008 where the Premier Mark Grantley was opposing geothermal, say so it was causing tremors in the island. Yes, I saw it. I saw it. But I know I, I, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, so you understand now, Marisha, when I say, and I hear him talk with geothermal, I pull out my hearing aid because <laughs> the, sunny, the sun article, I, I saw the article, but I know about it. I know it's not, I don't wait, I wasn't waiting on the sun to tell me. It, this is a man, when we in government, is everything, is everything he opposed. We send the guys off to train that for three months skills training. One guy called me one morning and said, Mr. Daniel, what happened? Mark said, we don't know nothing when we went training that. Imagine <laughs> that, in three months. He said, you can't learn nothing in three months. <laughs> I, I learned I a lot. You close your mic, you tap your screen, you close your mic again. Your mic is closed. Unmute. Yeah, you unmute. Okay, somebody will call you, that's why. Okay, folks, it appears that the um the NRP meeting have started, so we're going to uh try and close off now as well, because I yes. want to give folks the opportunity to hear the NRP meeting. Brother Daniel, I yes. understand the NRP meeting has started. I do not know if you're going to have time before uh, Monday that we could chat again, but I'm available whatever time you guys are available. Tomorrow okay. I'm supposed to have um, Brother Alvon. I don't know if you can join me a little earlier. If you're available, we can continue this conversation. Yes, yes. I, I'll see. I have a very, as you can imagine, I have a pack for you. I, I see that. I can um, see that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it was a pleasure joining you, Marisha. When you come, when you come Christmas, make sure you come Nevis. I, I normally go down think it's for a few for some of the carnival activities and so on. You're talking, so, about, you're talking about Christmas. I come in for elections. You're going to see me for the election. No, I, I, and when you come, I'm, in, I'm inviting you to the spirit. <laughs> I look forward to that. I look forward to that. <laughs> but, I, but I will be there on the weekend. I definitely would not let the election take place this time around, and I'm not on the I'm island. Okay. Okay. So, and, like right. I said, and like I said, I'm bringing some um, power with me because this gentleman you just said here, he yes. has access to um, some aircraft, a company with some aircraft that is parked at the moment. And this issue that we are having in the region, they cannot get flights in and out of St. Kitts Navy. Right. I'm trying to get them to speak to the government and try to work on something to start get some airlift into the Federation. So there's a what lot. size? What, how many people can they carry? Various sizes. Oh, okay. From 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 from, from the Greenier size, the layered size to the American airline size. Oh, various okay. sizes, various sizes. Wow. So we just have to get things in place and make sure everybody understand the situation. And once there is an agreement, we could make it happen. But I'm signing off now that I could go and deal with my cousin. Okay, sure. Because and thanks um, for having me and we it, it took it took me about about um, the last ten years to get him to the bomb. So I, I, I I'm happy that he's here with his family and everything like that. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go and deal with him. So, brother Hensley, thanks for joining. Yes, me. sure. All no right, problem. Cool. All, right. All, right. All right, stand by. Mm -hmm. oh, so, that? folks.